right, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Super Pro 1000, episode 128. I am Super Pro 1000, and today we are going to talk about pretty much one thing and one thing only. Uh, I'm sure by the title of the video, which it, I don't think this will come as much of a surprise, but pretty much the biggest thing in gaming news that happened this week was that Activision repurposed Crash and Spyro developer Toys for Bob into COD Warzone development. So this actually came out a few days ago. As soon as I read it, I was like, wow, April Fools was literally a month ago. And then as I read more, I realized, uh, yeah, they're not kidding. So basically the gist of it is this. Toys for Bob uh, more or less spent the last three or four years creating the Spyro Crash, I'm sorry, the Crash Bandicoot remake, uh, the Insane Trilogy, uh, Crash Team Racing, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, and I think lastly, uh, Crash 4 It's About Time, which was very well received. A lot of people touting it was just as good as the original games. It sold reasonably well. It sold very well. Um, and they more or less were prepped to either make more Crash games, because Crash sells more than Spyro. I'm not going to pretend like it doesn't. But they were prepped, you know, they were at a good spot. A lot of people really believed in them. A lot of people saw that their vision was good. Uh, I was one of them. I, I firmly believe that they had the potential to sort of bring these platformer games into the new light, and that Activision was actually doing kind of a solid bro move in order to facilitate this. And unfortunately, it just seems like that will not come to fruition. Now, they did say that they will continue to support Bandicoot, I'm sorry, Crash Bandicoot 4, and more recently provide additional development support to Warzone, but I'm going to be real with you, I've heard this same discussion before, I, I mean, I don't know how many times we have to run the fucking gauntlet of company gets moved by publisher to work on other soulless game that they had nothing to do with originally, and then their company just doesn't go anywhere, and then they either get disbanded or merged into something greater. I, I don't know how many times you have to watch this happen before you finally maybe get the fucking message. Um, EA has done this so many fucking times over the years. Uh, Square has... Square doesn't really dissolve people. They just kind of shit out their stuff and just throw them to the wolves. And now Activision has done this. I believe this is their second time. I think they did something to the Tony Hawk devs uh, off the top of my head that I can't remember. And they kind of shelved their project. I think it was Neversoft, right? Like, did Neversoft make Tony Hawk? I think they did. I think they made either Tony Hawk or Guitar Hero or both. But they basically put them into the ringer. And I believe now they just provide support for Call of Duty. I might be wrong about that. I haven't, I, I haven't looked into that. But off the top of my head, I could tell you that that's what EA... This is like a textbook EA move. And as far as you know on this podcast, I have been very staunchly anti-EA. Because basically most of the things that EA does are either to kneecap their, their smaller games or to really just kind of fuck over their big games, which makes no sense. And I, I just don't understand it for the life of me. Now, the obvious answer and, and rebuttal is that COD Warzone makes a lot of money. And, and Call of Duty just makes a lot of money. So this is not really an argument about what makes what money. Although, to be fair, Toys for Bob, at least most, if not all of their games, were incredibly profitable. Not Call of Duty levels of profitability. But that's probably just the biggest thing that I could say about a lot of different companies. Is that stuff might not be... Call of Duty or Final Fantasy or whatever levels of profitability, but it's still profitable, it still makes people happy, it still allows a group of individuals to express a creative design and create a new, different style of video game. How many fucking first-person shooters have we had in the last decade? You know, how many of them have directly, basically become Call of Duty clones? Right, I think a lot of people will probably forget when Battlefield was literally trying not to be a Call of Duty clone in every way, and then eventually ended up just becoming a Call of Duty clone. You know, even Halo now has aimed down the sights and all these other things that are, you know, weren't even in other Halo games to begin with. You know, and, and every other game wants to be Call of Duty. Call of Duty wants to be anything else but Call of Duty. And I just find it crazy that after all these years, they still feel like they need to pump more resources into Call of Duty when it literally is the top-selling game on almost every platform it comes out on year after year after year. It is a massive pit 
of, of money and subscriptions and now microtransactions where you can buy like you know weird like gun colorings and, and shit and in fairness they do add free content to the game you know they never I can't remember the last time they had a Call of Duty map pack or anything like that but and they never did online pass but and Warzone is also free but on the flip side of that you know there is like how much money could they possibly fucking make off this game and I mean obviously the, the capitalist answer is that enough there's there's never enough the sky's the fucking limit but unfortunately what that means for other smaller projects is the same shit that i always talk about square enix doing this to deus ex and hitman ea doing this to mirror's edge and dead space and sims and all these other games under their umbrella ubisoft just kind of throwing a couple of projects to the fucking wolves although they're kind of the least egregious offenders of this uh because they at least acknowledge people want to Splinter Cell, and there is a Prince of Persia remake coming out, as unnecessary as I think it is, but whatever. And Beyond Good and Evil is still supposedly slated to come out some fucking year. Uh, like, forget Skull and Bones. I honestly, if, if Beyond Good and Evil 2 gets canceled, then I'll, I'll kind of say that they're on the same level. But I don't particularly think that they're going to. But we could say that about any of those E3 games that got canceled after a couple of years or whatever. And at this point, I'm just sick of it. It's just tiring. It's not even really... I don't even feel like I get mad about it. I just get annoyed, and I just see wasted potential. And it just it just makes me sad. It's like you have this company that flat out brought so much life. They probably gave us the best versions of the Spyro games and the Crash games. You know, usually with a remake, something gets lost in translation. You know, one of the biggest examples I could give you is Resident Evil 3's remake, which was just almost in some ways a step down from the 20 year old game it's based off of but at the minimum right it was 2000 it was either 2000 or 99 when that game came out so it's like 20 21 years between them and in, in a lot of ways i think it's inferior which is you know it says a lot when a game in 2020 you know has potentially less content or less diverse uh elements in it than a game that came out in 2021 i'm sorry 2020 and you know when that that might just be a really really bad example of a remake it's it certainly takes a lot to change up the formula that much and have it still come out being kind of negative but at the least i would say like when you get the the toys for bob remakes they definitely had a lot of the spirit a lot of the fun you know they proved they could make challenging crash games crash 4 probably being one of the most difficult crash games out there and between i was really interested to know what their next project was now we'll see if what activision is saying is true but I don't, i'm not going to trust the fucking publisher about anything anymore i mean how many times does ea promise up down left right and center they're not abandoning stuff and they're they're going to release the best product possible and the game comes out and it's a buggy fucking mess and they're basically counting the days down before they could shelve the fucking product I'm sorry, shelve the IP and shelve the fucking servers and repurpose them into other stuff. Like, like how many times do you have to play a game and then Square Enix, you know, fucking Tabata comes on 15 and says, oh, well, we're going to keep it on track. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And the game comes out and, like, the first half is okay. And you can, you know, you can clearly tell where the development shifted into a completely different game that they just stapled onto the back of what they already had. You know, how many times does that need to fucking happen? before you get the fucking message. And I, I think the message is simple. Uh, these companies are shitheads. They don't like creative projects anymore, and they just want to pump out a bunch of bullshit. And a lot of people will say, well, that's what it's always been like. No, I, I would argue that's not what it was always like, because, and I know the people that make this argument, most of you, who are all of you are almost older than me, will remember a time when they would release games, you know, companies would take basically indie developers and say you're making a game for us now and we're gonna release it naughty dog was a bunch of indie developers before the fucking before crash bandicoot took off you know naughty dog were was a small fucking company they were indie size they hadn't really that was their big breakout product and i mean to say the least from there they have grown and grown and grown released at least four or five different franchises and all of it has been a smash hit all of it's been a smash success and i think that that you know to say that companies like that just cannot ever flourish again we're just going to get the same fucking games year after year after year because that's what it's going to whittle down to 
you know, when you have Deus Ex getting shelved and Prince of Persia and Splinter Cell and Dead Space and Crash and Spyro and Sly Cooper and all these other platformers getting shelved, you have puzzle and stealth games going the way of the dinosaurs. You know, it, that's what it really kind of more or less boils down to is you're going to have your industry titans and then they're going to sell well eternally because of brand recognition and everyone else could go suck a dick. And I think that that's the entirely wrong way to go about it. I think that that's just going to decrease the amount of creativity and the amount of diversity in video gaming, period. You're going to have eras where all these games were good. And that's that's part of the reason why Toys for Bob existed in the fucking first place. Is because Activision held the crash license and they wanted to probably make a remake. They wanted to revive it. And these guys went completely above and beyond to make this game. To make multiple games you know and with the crash remake came the idea that well maybe they'll bring back the other playstation era mascot and then that happened and then they had crash team racing and then they had a whole bunch of other stuff well really it was just crash 4 i'm sorry not a whole bunch of other stuff but the, the point is is that they brought back this era that most of us who remember it uh probably fucking you know forgot about and they were able to still you know they were able to still capitalize on it it's, it's nostalgia at the best and i would argue that they did it on the same level that nintendo does it on but to say that game studios it was never about profitability i think is fucking incredibly wrong there are so many games that came out during the ps1 and the ps2 and the gamecube era that were just creatively shots in the dark and no idea if they would take off or not. Even into the 360 era. I mean, Assassin's Creed was originally devised as a Prince of Persia game that just eventually spiraled off into something completely different. Could you imagine, like, an Assassin's Creed game not coming out for two years because they did take a break? Uh, it actually took two, two, two breaks in Assassin's Creed, but one of them was at the very beginning. You know, could you imagine Assassin's Creed not coming out? Because Assassin's Creed ain't been around that long, all things considered. You know, God of War. This is another big franchise, right? God of War and all these other games were, at the time, you know, creative shots in the dark by studios that probably were just getting their, you know, getting their boots on, getting ready to roll out. And to say that we can't have that anymore, we can't have either new IPs take off, you know, other IPs establish themselves, and we just throw them to the fucking wolves and then just, like, perpetually put them on sale, never make anything new. This is how you get the same fucking games every single year, year after year after year after year. I think that that's just going to eventually lead to stagnation if we don't actually break it. I mean, obviously, there's nothing stopping companies from eventually not doing it, but there's nothing stopping them from not not doing that, as, as weird as, of a sentence as that is. And I think it's very, it's very sad when you have people who clearly can do it and can do it well and the only thing that they ever get is to be thrown into the next soulless machine. So at EA, it's Battlefield, right? Like you either work on helping them with uh, uh, act. Uh, I'm sorry, with, with uh, what's the fucking engine uh, that they, they that sucks dick? Frostbite, I think 3.0 at this point, which they kind of forced everyone to use, which was again something that was just a massive disaster. Uh, you kind of either force them into that. At Activision, they, they more or less force you to work on Call of Duty and specifically Warzone uh, as, as additional development support, which basically means you're the bitch boy who pumps out Warzone content. Uh, at Square, I believe most of it's Final Fantasy. Um, specifically, I think they put a lot of resources into Final Fantasy XV, uh, so that's another thing that they did. At Sony, recently, that was the Naughty Dog thing. This, this shit literally just happened with Days Gone. Where Days Gone came out, you know, it did well, it did okay, right? It was a new IP, uh, people bought it. You know, and Sony, in their infinite wisdom, turns around, and, and it, the worst part about Days Gone is that it basically was in not only the same competition as Last of Us 2, but it was also, Last of Us had a really, really turbulent development for Last of Us Part 2. And because of that, a lot of the Naughty Dog staff left. They just didn't want to work there anymore. That's how fucking bad it was there. They didn't want to work on it anymore. You know, forget anything about the critical reception or whatever the game actually fucking holds in it. They didn't want to work there anymore. And Days Gone, which was originally a Naughty Dog subsidiary, was about to be merged back into Naughty Dog. They had to plead to Sony not to do it. And now they're going to work on their own IP. And I'm sure the same thing is going to repeat itself with Days Gone. 
is that it's going to be a good game. It's going to come out. It's going to do okay, you know, and then something, something else, and they're going to want to probably try to merge them into something else, or it's not going to be good enough for Sony. Because the bottom line is these companies see what their best product is, and they expect all of their products to sell at that level. And I don't think I need to tell you that that's just not realistic. You know, certain franchises are too hard or perceived to be too hard by the average person and they don't want to play it. And I mean, that's fine. You know, the average person you can't browbeat them into fucking playing something. You could try to urge them to maybe try it out, you know, try to push themselves. But, you know, most people who play games, they, they just kind of want to roll over and get their stomach scratched. I mean, maybe I'm not like that, but... Most people who play games just they want to buy the easy shit and clock out. And and that's how it's always it's always been and I guess that's how it will always be. Just this time there won't be any fucking alternatives to it in another ten or twenty years. Um maybe even sooner, depending how quickly we're gonna go about this. You have you know, your sports games, you have COD, you have maybe an Assassin's Creed game. You know, Nintendo has their Zelda, Mario, Pokemon, and whatever. They have their own problems keeping IPs dead for like 10 years and doing nothing with it outside of Smash Brothers. Uh, and then, yeah, Battlefield maybe once every however often when EA can get their heads out of their fucking asses. And then the rest of it is just kind of a fucking dice roll if, if the company feels like doing it. And at this point, it's, it's just kind of like... You know, it happened with Deus Ex, where Deus Ex sold really well. You know, Human Revolution sold millions of copies, two million copies. And and the Hitman game sold a couple million, I believe. And Tomb Raider, I think, sold the best. Uh, I think that's just because Tomb Raider is more recognizable than uh, Deus Ex ever was. I think Lara Croft is, is definitely one of the OG industry uh, mascots, which was another PlayStation 1 IP that's still around. And to her credit, her remakes took off. You know, everyone saw it. Everyone, you know, was was familiar with it. And and I played the first one. It was okay. I, I wasn't, like, super sold on it. But, I mean, they did really well. And Deus Ex and Hitman got the shelf, you know? I, I suspect other reasons why they didn't also shelve Tomb Raider. But they shelved Deus Ex and Hitman. They had no problem putting them in the fucking back burner and throwing them out to sea. And... Because of that, Mankind Divided comes out, and I don't need to tell you how fucked up Mankind Divided is. If you've been around anything I've ever done long enough, the game is so fucked up in so many ways. And uh, because of that, you know, the franchise is now dormant. They have no plans. They had a whole Deus Ex universe they wanted to work on. It's not going to happen. You know, the same thing happened with Dead Space. Dead Space comes out, it sells well. Dead Space 2 was one of the biggest games of 2011, you know, when it, when it fucking came out. And it came out very early in the year, mind you. And, you know, Dead Space 3 was almost like an afterthought in a lot of ways. With a cliffhanger DLC that eventually led to nothing because the IP was shelved. And the studio that worked on it, which was Visceral, got fucking canned. They got let go. So, there will probably never be a Dead Space 4. If there is a Dead Space 4, it probably will not be on the same level as the other games in the franchise at all so i guess dead space just has a really shitty ending and that's it and if you were expecting more because it was cliffhanger to expect more uh you can lick their balls you know same thing with mirror's edge it's it's the same thing and repeat endlessly fucking endlessly and it's, it's just a creative fucking wormhole nothing really comes out of it so I would guess Vicarious Visions are, are doing a little bit better, but I don't know. I feel like the same thing with Respawn is going to happen someday, is that how many studios does EA even really have left? You know, a bunch of small studios and basically DICE, Respawn, and Bioware. And Bioware, at this point, should have been liquidated ten times over with how poorly they've been pumping out games. So... If I was a smaller studio, I, I would see this, I would see a lot of other things, and I would never want to work with half of these people. I would never want to be acquired by them. I, I think the only per, the only people who might not want to fall into this wormhole are, are Microsoft and Ubisoft, but I don't know. I, I just feel like it's just depressing. It's really sad to see that companies that make not only profitable, right? Because it's not like they just made a bunch of fancy shit and it wasn't profitable. But not only profitable, but recognizable, nostalgic, and, you know, well-received. People had generally good conceptions about Toys for Bob. They, they delivered a lot on the product. And at this point, I feel like this is just turning into a fucking obituary. 
uh, you know, throughout all the years of the podcast. Because how many times does it need to happen before you just get sick of it? I'm fucking sick of it. I'm tired of it. I just am. And Activision just, I, I just don't know anymore, man. They're, they're just fucking, COD is, I get it's like what they're iconically known for, but you could at least fucking pretend, you know? You could at least fucking pretend. Because, I mean, maybe they'll see market increases in Warzone. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this will increase their bottom line more than fucking remakes. I'm not going to keep up on it enough to see that. I probably really highly doubt that will be the case. You know, you're free to prove me wrong, but I highly doubt that will be the case. But no matter what, it's still an L for Creative Visions, and it's still an L for other old franchises that like to survive. I mean, at this point, the platformer era was killed by the serious, you know, blockbuster uh, video game making era. The, the platformers were a very, very strong thing, you know, out of the 80s and then especially into the 90s with 3D. You know, a lot of different platformers came out, and now basically none of them exist anymore. And I think the same thing is starting to happen to the stealth genre. I don't really think that outside of Hitman, any stealth games are coming out this year. And even Hitman, you know, went on a hiatus. Like, their Metal Gear is finished. Konami is complete. I didn't even talk about fucking Konami, you know, basically fucking over three completely viable franchises. Um, you know, it's, it's at the point where it's like... And the other thing that people are doing is people are saying, well, oh, maybe Beanox could work on it. That's not the fucking point, and I don't think that's going to happen anyway. The, the point is, is that whoever does it, whoever does these things, usually gets merged into some other shitty project that, that they had nothing to do with originally. And obviously that's the way of, you know, business. That's the way of bureaucracy. If your boss tells you to jump, you're going to fucking jump. But it's always these idiots that always do the same dumb shit that never pans out and then they blame the people that they told to do the dumb shit in the first place you know and that is is you know that's just life i mean that's that's what happens i can tell you that but that's at what point does it end probably never so it's just the the, the shittiest part about reality is that you could have infinite potential and all these companies and studios could have visions and they will never get to make it even when it makes money you know, even when it is profitable, it, it didn't make enough. It didn't make COD numbers. But how many games out there really can make Call of Duty numbers? And I think that that's not even Battlefield sells Call of Duty numbers. And Battlefield is the direct competitor. Like, the only games that really compete with it are, like, basically the fucking Titans. You know, like Mario, uh, Pokemon can compete with it. Like, what else really competes with this? And I just, I, I shudder to imagine how many studios struggle to make their smaller titles equate with their bigger titles, which is an impossible task. You will never sell as many Deus Ex copies as Final Fantasy XV. It just will not fucking happen. And it certainly won't happen when you make the game this, like, horrific shell of its former self. You know, you will never have a Dead Space game that sells on the same level as Battlefield. It just won't happen. It just won't. Horror games especially, you know? Like, that's, an, that's a genre. Resident Evil had that shit on lock, and that's it. That is pretty much the only horror game that sells on, like, ridiculous AAA levels. Maybe a Silent Hill game, if it was big and made very well, that's more or less what PT would have fucking been. You know, Dead Space 2 kind of approached that level. But think about how long Resident Evil has been around. That's another another random fucking game getting dropped, by the way, in the PS1 era, you know, that just went on to have Titan status. And I think that if we don't have, you know, these IPs come out, shoot their shot, and try to become big major IPs, in 10 years we're really going to feel it when all we're playing is fucking Call of Duty and, uh, you know, Assassin's Creed and all in 2k and there's none and maybe gta 6 some eventually but that's not necessarily bad that those games still exist you know at that point 30 years down the line what's bad is that there will be nothing else to supplement it you will never have a medal of honor you know to maybe provide a fresh twist on the first person shooter genre you won't have more spec ops the lines you won't have another catherine you won't have another uh another mirror's edge you won't have any more platformers to kind of provide a nostalgic twist on the genre you just won't have that and i think that that's probably the most frustrating part about it is that yeah people will always make these side games and you know smaller stuff will remain but basically nothing is immune from the guillotine and i don't see things being created as quickly as they're being shelved 
and you know maybe stuff like you know for instance like returnal is a new game that's a new ip well how many returnal games are they going to possibly make in the next 10 years you know or returnal like games i guess i should say even if it's not direct sequels you know like the dark souls shit right like dark souls games or so i guess soulsborn as they're called now you know they could they could make a ton of them that created a genre in its own right and they still make it like that's from soft's like whole gimmick and they don't do it often enough i think that you, you know you could say that they're milking it too hard or anything but um definitely i think that there's going to be problems later down the line i mean i guess unless we plan to revive these things for a couple of years every decade and then forget that they exist and act like they were never fucking profitable they were never uh, sufficient enough I, I guess that's what it's going to be. But I guarantee you we're still going to be playing some manner of Call of Duty Battle Royale in 10 years. I don't think Activision's ever going to let that go. It'll probably still be called fucking Warzone. People are going to forget when Call of Duty games were called certain things and had certain modes. And they're just going to say, well, Warzone's still around. You know? And I mean, granted, as, as great of a product as Warzone is, I don't think that it's worth eclipsing other products that could come out. That's really the, the, the thesis statement, and that's really the, the final statement I'll make on it, is that I don't think that it's worth eclipsing future products that could have creative visions and just be fucking different, you know, to make another FPS. Because I think at this point, every one of us has played a, an FPS, to, you know, to hell and back. I think every person has played a Call of Duty game. I don't even like fucking Call of Duty games anymore. So, it's a shame. It really is. And I don't trust Activision when they say, oh, it's, it's just support. It's just support. I don't believe that. I, 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 I used to believe stuff like that, and then like years of seeing it happen in the opposite has convinced me that that doesn't happen. So, that's nice. Anyway, that's pretty much the only thing I really had to talk about. Uh, PlayStation Studios opened a Steam Curator page, so that might be interesting to follow. Basically, it seems like Sony is really prepping to drop video game uh their video games onto steam onto pc so i mean i guess stay tuned for that lost souls aside is coming to ps5 and that's it i was going to talk about other small shit because there was literally nothing that happened this week there's one kotaku article where they they complained about white women uh not being progressive enough as as protagonists actually i should talk about that i don't have it though oh fuck i don't have it i, I have the archive somewhere Ah, oh, fuck me. Did I link it in my Discord? I feel like I did, but we bumped a lot of shit, and I don't know if I'm gonna find it. Oh, Christ, let me search archive on my own Discord. Oh, perfect. Man, I love Discord sometimes. Discord is, is, is amazing, I swear to you. Because I'm the only one that links archives. Okay, can I, uh, what opera window are you on? There you go. Is this the right window? Yeah, here we go. Sorry, your cis white woman protagonist isn't progressive. Oh, my favorite. You know, the complete, hold on, get my mouse cursor. The completely customizable female protagonist. A literal not protagonist. And yeah, I guess this counts. But, but I'd like to point out that they, they throw all of this shit out, man. Uh, first of all, I don't even know how to pronounce this bitch's name, but Lady D Dimitriscu? I, I, I don't listen to any of the trailers, I'm sorry. I just know I'm buying the game. Um, this is not a protagonist. Unless there's some secret part of the game that you're privy to where like she's like a hero or something at the end. Uh, she seems to be an antagonist. I, I don't think tall vampire lady is a protagonist. I, I don't think you understand what the word protagonist is. By the way, this is this is their job. Uh, uh, when I look at these games, cis white women are a safe option. They are as much the default. Now you see, this article wouldn't have fucking existed ten years ago. They would have they would never have said this. They're they're literally never fucking happy when they do this shit. But at the end of the article, because I'm not even going to read all of this, because I'm going to clock out and go play near and try to be happy for that. Actually, that's a mistake. Holy shit. They say all of this. I'm glad it's shifting away from its dude-dominated history. Oh, man. I'm aware that the diversity isn't as dire as it was. And then here's a whole bunch of fucking games. Wow. Where, they, where it's totally not that at all. 
Amazing. So at the end of all of this, it's like, oh, but you guys are doing stuff because all three of these are new and upcoming games. I don't even know where Kenna is coming out. I'm kind of looking forward to Kenna. Um, is there a comment section? No. Oh. Yeah, well, here you go. Here's here's the only comments that you're going to get. This, this doesn't work because it's an archive. But uh, actually, yeah, it's the same thing. But putting myself on the fence, you think companies need to force diversity? If African Games made a company made 10 AAA about various African and suddenly made a game of white protagonists to sell copies of Pander, I want to know where the line is. Yeah, I, I agree. I think companies and, and visionaries should create the ideas that they think are the best. And if that includes diversity and, and different style protagonists, then so be it. That's why I'm, I'm really kind of... The only reason I didn't get Returnal is because Returnal is $70. And that's a discussion I had with my friend uh, where I was like, I don't think Returnal is $70. That that might be my, my one big gripe is because I don't think a lot of games are worth 60 So I don't think Returnal and, and by extension, the Ratchet and Clank game coming out is worth 70 and that's ironic. I know I just bitched about fucking platformers going away, but I don't want to. I don't think they're worth sixty. I'm sorry. I don't think they're worth seventy. I don't even think they're worth sixty. But at least sixty is kind of like I, I've been conditioned into it. I'm like, all right, that's the minimum. I, I'm not. I did. The only reason I didn't get Returnal is because it's seventy, and Resident Evil comes out, and I'm already paying only sixty for that anyway. So uh, that's just Sony marking up their fucking products. If you told me I had to buy fucking Last of Us two for seventy dollars i'd laugh in your fucking face uh i i have no desire to to ever do that but besides that um returnal uh it kind of fits the bill and and honestly you know i'm gonna put this in my gaming article folder for a rainy day when i want to reread this because i love that i could archive all of this um video games box arts wants to look progressive and inclusive guess who gets put on the box uh not not white women I, i'd like to tell you about, about assassin's creed for the last two fucking games basically baiting and swapping you okay sorry i, I completely lost my train of thought but uh, i'd like to say that the assassin's creed games have long since been baiting and swapping but that that's more that might just be a specifically ubisoft thing because ubisoft kind of does a lot of really dumb shit to be honest with you um and i'm kind of annoyed at that but that's on another level i think that that's them kind of trying to ride the fence where they want to not do it but I, I feel like ubisoft i think i think it was even leaked when they had the whole other shit that came out from the higher ups is that they they just feel like it won't sell like assassin's creed fucking won't sell uh, which, which is also hilarious um yeah, Overwatch 2 is, is literally never coming, by the way. That, that shit's going to come out in, like, 2023. That It, it is so... O Overwatch 2 is so fucked. I, I'm not even lying to you. I, I really... I don't know if, if Kaplan leaving is necessarily what's going to fuck it over hard, but I, I think that it, it is kind of a strong thing. Or it is kind of a, a bad indication, usually, when people leave mid-development. That, uh, that was literally the tale of Anthem, and I don't see it ever being any different. I think that that's always going to be just a bad thing. But uh, in any event, I don't like that. That was literally the podcast I had, was like those couple of topics. They had a Spyro, uh, Spyro Year of the Dragon prototype uh, that I think was the E3 prototype that they showed off that had some pretty funny... Uh, clips because they had placeholder text and dialogue and stuff like that. Um, they had uh, what was the other thing that they had? Shit, I can't even remember. Um, what was it? Oh, and, and I was going to talk about some of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition changes because I thought it was pretty good, and I was going to talk about like how that that makes Mass Effect one more more. Uh, easier to play for the average person who holds down the fucking trigger until their gun overheats like a fucking idiot but um yeah i mean i don't really want to talk about that there ain't really much else to talk about other than the bad news of course because why would there ever be good news you know but uh, in any event that's all i have for today uh i'm clocking out early just because i want to go move on and play near and uh, i'll see you next time